As I am a happily married person, many single friends and acquaintances have asked me for advice on how to meet a mate. Upon investigation, I learned that many of the aforementioned friends had been trying to find consensual attraction using online dating services. You know, like Tinder for straight people, Grinder for gay men, and that new one called Attractor. For lonely farmers, I assume. One pal, who shall remain nameless, Luis, was weighing the idea of attending a local baking workshop where the attendees were purported to learn to bake amazing cookies. I said to him, let me stop you right there. Of course you should go to that. The best way to find a mate who will stick is for them to see you doing something that you love. Elsewhere in this recording, you will have heard about how far up I married, so you'll have to agree that I stand as conclusive proof of this idea. To refresh, when I first met Megan at rehearsal for a play we were both in, she had just finished the first two seasons of Will and Grace and was about to win her first Emmy. I was literally living in my friend's unfinished dirt-and-stone basement in exchange for turning it into a habitable space so that it could be rented to civilized humans. I could flagrantly and flamboyantly urinate in the middle of the room, and by the next day you couldn't tell where it had occurred. Yes, I agree that this is awesome, but that was really the only good thing about living there besides the price. Clearly, we were existing at very different levels of prosperity as measured by personal hygiene, if nothing else. But when I met Megan that first day, I was also helping the theater company Carpenter build a stage in its new warehouse building. So I was wearing a tool belt, and I was covered in a patina of sweat and sawdust and satisfaction. I have to believe that whatever glow she saw coming off my ursine features must have played a substantial role, even subliminally, in her eventual decision to roll the dice on a relationship with me. So I told my friend, of course you should go to a cookie-baking class, because number one, you'll be walking into some cool loft space that'll be warm and sweetly redolent of baking cookies. Number two, there will be no married people there, but there will undoubtedly be other single people hoping to assist their own mating games, tossing around phrases like mouthfeel and egg beater and moist batter. Make sure you've greased your muffin cups. Come on, Luis. At some point in the proceedings, you're sure to participate in the group chewing mouthfuls of glorious cookies, smiling at one another and saying, mmm, and nodding. If you can't engage a new love friend out of that scenario, then I don't know what to do with you. In worst case scenario, if you don't find your true love there, you will have merely succeeded in tricking yourself into baking amazing cookies. That's the best part of this technique. Get out of your house, get off of your phone, then go and participate in things that thrill you. Maybe it's a softball team, maybe it's playing bluegrass music, maybe it's a flooring seminar at the Home Improvement Center. Just embonered myself? It doesn't matter what it is, so long as you like it. When people see you doing something you deeply enjoy, they see you at your most attractive. Don't go to events where the stated objective is to find romance. A spark is much more likely to catch fire when the participants are not lined up scrutinizing the hearth for the first hint of smoke. To my recollection, I've been on only two actual dates in my life, pre-Megan. Yet I've had a healthy and fruitful record in relationships with ladies, ending in this current bountiful harvest of 18 years and counting. The vast majority of these romantic liaisons, including my marriage, were born in the theater, where we were able to very deeply observe one another engaging in a very vulnerable version of something we love, acting. 